In this video, we're going to look at how to name ionic compounds. So there's two things we want to be able to do. We want to be able to name the compound if we're given the chemical formula. And secondly, we want to be able to write the correct chemical formula if we're given the name of the compound. In this video, we're going to focus only on how to name the compound when we're given the chemical formula. So just a bit about ionic compounds. They're composed of either a metal cation or a polyatomic cation, and this is ionically bonded to either a nonmetal anion or a polyatomic anion. When we write the chemical formula, the cation is always going to be written first, and the anion will always be written second. And something else that's very important, when you pair the cations and the anions, the sum of the charges on the cations and the anions always must add up to zero. So the simplest ratio of cations to anions that have a net zero charge is called a formula unit. So when we're naming ionic compounds given the formula, we want to first identify and name the cation, then we want to identify and name the anion, and then we just put those two names together to have the name of the chemical compound. When we're Identify and name of the cation. The cation may be a monoatomic metal cation with a constant charge. It could be a monoatomic metal cation that has a variable charge. Or it may be a polyatomic cation. If we're identifying and naming the anion, it may be a monoatomic metal anion with a negative charge. Or it may be a polyatomic nonmetal ion anion, of course, with a negative charge. So monoatomic means it's made up of only one type of atom. So once we name those, we'll put those names together. So let's start by identifying and naming the cations. First, if you have a monoatomic metal cation with a constant charge, then the ion has the same name as the element. For example, here we have two chemical formulas, NaCl and AlF3. Our cation is written first in A. Sodium has a constant charge, so the ion would simply be called sodium. Here, Al, aluminum, has a constant charge, so our cation here would simply be called aluminum. So if we look on this periodic table of ions, we can see that uh, group 1A metal cations will always have a constant plus one charge. Group 2A metal cations will always have a plus two charge. Uh, group 3A metal cations will always have a plus three charge. And then some of our transition metals, such as silver and zinc, those will also always have a, a constant charge. So in that case, when you come across one of those cations, the cation has the same name as the element. So what if your cation is a metal cation, but it can have more than one charge? Well, we have to use a Roman numeral when we're writing the name to indicate the charge. We determine the charge on the cation by looking at the anion, its charge, and how many of the anions you have. Let me give you an example. Here we have two chemical formulas, FeCl2, FeCl3. Our cation is Fe, which is iron, in both of them. So in this case, though, if we look on our periodic table of ions, we see iron can have uh, multiple charges. In this case, the iron is paired with two chlorine ions. Chlorine, we know, has a minus one charge. So we have two of those. So we have a total of a minus two charge. Remember, the charges have to add up to zero. So the iron ion must have a plus two charge in this compound. So we would say iron two with a Roman numeral when we're writing the name of the cation. Over here, we have FeCl3. Chloride is a minus one charge. We have three of those. The sum of the charges have to add up to zero. So the iron must be a plus three in this compound. So we would call the cation here iron three. So if you have a metal that can have variable charges, you must use a Roman numeral when you're naming that cation and you're writing the chemical formula. So looking back at our table of ions here, you can see that 
uh, there are a lot of transition metals that can have multiple charges. There are also a couple of heavy metals such as lead and tin over here uh, that can have multiple charges. So when you come across one of these, uh, you have to use a Roman numeral when you're naming that compound. Our third instance for the cation is that the cation may be polyatomic. So in that case, it's made up of multiple, more than one uh, types of atoms, but it has a positive charge, so it's a polyatomic ion. So we have to recognize and memorize all of our polyatomic cations. But the polyatomic cation, when we're naming it, it has the same name as that polyatomic ion. So an example would be NH4Cl. We would have to recognize that NH4 plus is the ammonium ion. So when we're naming this compound, we would name the cation simply as ammonium. So there's not many uh, polyatomic cations. Ammonium is the most common, uh, but you want to be familiar with these. So once we've named the cation, we want to name the anion. So the anion may be a nonmetal monoatomic anion, and in that case, the anion has the same name as the element, but we change the ending to IDE. A couple of examples. Here we have NaCl. Let's look at the anion written second, the Cl minus, that's our anion, and so instead of chlorine, we'd call it chloride. Na2O, O2 minus, oxygen with a 2 minus charge, that is my uh, anion, so instead of oxygen, we'd call it oxide. So look back at our periodic table of ions, you can see that the anions are all non-metals, so these are what we would call our monoatomic anions over here and you can see that uh, group uh, 7a those all our halogens always have a minus one charge um, group 6a those have a minus two charge and group 5a those have a minus three charge so nitride phosphide sulfide we in the um, we give them an ending of ide to indicate that they are anions and one other thing, the anions always have a constant charge. You'll never find an anion with a variable charge, so we don't have to use any Roman numerals with the anions. So our second case with anions is that it may be polyatomic. In that case, we give it the same name as the polyatomic ion. So again, we have to memorize and recognize our polyatomic anions. So that takes a little bit of work, so be sure you do that. So here we have NaNO3. We would recognize that NO3 minus is a polyatomic anion. So we would call it nitrate because that's the name of the anion. CaSO4, we would recognize that SO4 2 minus is called the sulfate ion. So we would call this anion sulfate. So again, make flashcards, whatever you need to do, but be sure you take some time and memorize the names, the chemical formulas, and the charges on all of your polyatomic anions. So once we name the cation and anion, then we just put them together to have the correct name. So let's go through these. We looked at these chemical formulas earlier. <clears throat> NaCl, sodium is the cation, chloride is the anion. It has a constant charge, so no need for a Roman numeral, so this would be sodium chloride. Okay. Aluminum chloride is AlCl3. We Again, we need three chlorides for each aluminum, so the charges add up to zero, but we don't put that three in the name anywhere. Aluminum and chloride will always combine to give us this formula unit, so we'd simply call this aluminum chloride. FeCl2, we said that this is iron two, so we have to put a Roman numeral, iron two chloride, FeCl3, that iron has a plus 3 charge, so we recognize the charge, or we indicate the charge, with the Roman numeral, iron 3 chloride. NaNO3, sodium is my cation, nitrate is my anion, so sodium nitrate. CaSO4, calcium is my cation, sulfate is my anion, so we call it calcium sulfate. So here's a few uh, for you to practice with. Pause the video answer these questions by naming the giving the correct name for each of these ionic compounds 
and then start the video back and see how you did. Okay, so let's see how we did. For the first one, lithium nitride would be the name. Lithium is the metal. N3 minus is nitride, so lithium nitride. MnO2, Mn, manganese, can have multiple charges. Oxide always has a minus two. We have two oxides, so two oxides, each with a minus two, gives me a total of a minus four charge. Uh, so our manganese, which we have one of, has to have a plus four to, to balance those charges out. So manganese four, and the four indicates the charge on the manganese, manganese four oxide. Here we have CaCrO4. Calcium is my cation. CrO4 2 minus is a polyatomic anion called chromate. So this would be simply calcium chromate. Au3PO4, gold, one phosphate. Phosphate is PO4, and phosphate has a 3 minus charge. We have to have that memorized. So the gold, we have three golds, so each of those golds has to have a plus one charge, and that gives us a, a neutral formula unit. So this is gold one phosphate. And finally, barium, nitrate, barium is my cation, nitrate is my anion. We have two of those to balance out the charges, but again, the formula name is simply barium nitrate. So practice, practice as many of these as you can. Be sure you're familiar with all the polyatomic ions. Don't forget to use the Roman numerals. And be sure you have uh, you master this topic. It's very important.